I have lots of good conversations with educators about the idea of being a principal. And one of the things I often hear is this. Well, I don't want to be a principal because I don't want to do those things. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And the perception is that the principal, the role of the things that they're actually doing, just has to be replicated by the next person. And for me, when I became a principal, I always thought about, what would I look for in a principal? What were the things that, to be honest with you, I despised that were happening in my school when I was a teacher that I didn't necessarily have to do? And the beauty of the job of being principal, and this is reality, is you can kind of do it the way you want. Now, of course, there's outside things that you have to, you know, care about, and you're superintendent, you can't just, well, I guess maybe you can't do whatever you want. But I think there is an opportunity where this role is really evolving, and we think differently about it. And it has such an impact. And one of the things I always think about is, I've talked about that I used to be a basketball ref, and the thing with officials in any sport is that the ones that are really amazing, you don't tend to notice them. And the ones that are bad, you notice them. And I think the same can be said with, you know, um, leadership, both the school and district level. And I think part of it is, too, is you are creating an atmosphere where people are actually are given the opportunity to do things uh, that they're hired to do in a way that, you know, makes sense for them and really helps kids. And that's why I really enjoyed this conversation with Joel McLean uh, when we talked about this, talking about how we continuously are asking educators to think differently about the classroom while also not really pushing forward leadership in a different way. We're often trying to get teachers to do something different while the principal does the same thing. And so I hope you love this conversation. Whether you're a teacher or principal, I think, you know, it's a great conversation. Joel has so many great stories and ideas. I know you'll love it. Welcome back to the episode of the Innovative Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am blessed to have my friend Joel McLean on the podcast today. And Joel, I've known him for several years. We've crossed paths in person. Actually, this is probably as much as we've talked on Twitter. I think that's the first time we've ever actually talked over the computer on video. So yeah, it is. It is. Actually. So it's, it's actually rare. A lot of people I talk more, yeah. you know, over uh, the internet than I do in person, it seems yeah. loud, but you're the opposite. So it's great to connect with you. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Joel, he is a, uh, he is a current uh, district principal and I'll yeah. let you explain that better. Uh, yeah. Formerly a principal taught, he's, you know, around the same time that I started two years prior. So you got those two years on me, <laughs> right? So I'm like expecting two extra Difference years maker. Now. <laughs> Two extra years of wisdom here, uh, and he's in the North Bay area. And I'll give a little shout out to North Bay yeah. um, and to because uh, I've had the opportunity to be there. I remember you lot, did lots of yeah. I always get uh, sorry. I get North Bay and Thunder Bay mixed up because I was going to ask. Yeah, you Thunder Bay is much more right. Thunder Bay is yeah. like the what's Thunder Bay's got the special Danish. The what is it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, I don't. Actually. Oh, this is going to bug me now. It I got to remember. It could be. Yeah. Well, We'll have to find yeah, it after, but yeah, actually, that's much more up north. There's actually like a, <laughs> there's actually a term called turning or like pulling a Thunder Bay and it's you're on oh, the really? out, outside lane. Yeah. So I know this is a North Bay, but just <laughs> came to my head where you actually are in the outside turning lane to the left, but yeah. you, you turn, you turn to the left, but then you go into the, the near lane on the turn. And it's actually okay. called like pulling a thunder bay. Oh yes, 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 yeah, yes. So okay, that's a little. That's interesting. Little little North Bay. I know they're not the same, but hey, like they're both in Ontario and they're both bays, right? So I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah it, <laughs> it could sorry. be. I'm sure we got something here in North Bay too. That's North, some North kind bay, of maneuver. North bay, all the bays. All the bays are awesome. So Joel, if you could just kind of, <laughs> I just shared stuff nobody cares about, <laughs> except, for, except for the one person from Thunder Bay North Bay listing. So uh, Joel, if you can just yeah. introduce yourself, tell us what you do today and how you got there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, George. Thanks for having me again. This is great to connect yeah. with you. So uh, I'm loving it. I love the podcast. So it's it's great, great work that you're doing. Thank you. So yeah. So um, listen, I'm a uh, presently. I am a, a sort of like a district principal. I work for a public French school board here in North Bay, Ontario, which is about hmm. city about three and a half hours north of Toronto. And uh, so officially, my my title, if I am to uh, to translate it. It's a school efficacy leader. So basically, it's uh, you know I'm a district principal. I've got a team of teachers that are like instru- like, like uh, instructional leaders. They go into the schools and you know they meet teachers and they help them with their instructions. They 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 co-create together, mm-hmm. and we'll you know we'll organize all all the um, all the trainings throughout the, throughout the district. Whenever a curriculum is revised, for example, we'll get that going and and get the people what they need. We'll accompany people uh, to develop their uh, their pedagogical skills. And so it's t- that type of team. So I'm sure that people that work in school boards, you'll recognize what that is. Uh, the other really interesting part of the job and the reason why it, it's actually a new position for me. I've been in education mm-hmm. since 1997, two years before you, George. That's right. <laughs> two, two extra years. I love it. <laughs> and uh, so start off as a, a as a grade seven and eight science teacher. So that, that's where I started off and had big dreams to become principal. I had some big ideas and, you know, visions on how I thought, you know, things should should roll in a school. Yeah. 
So, I, you know, I stayed in the classroom for about nine years, and then that's when I got my first principal gig. So uh, chemistry teacher as well. I, I went off to high school after that and taught chemistry for uh, many years and uh, then became a principal. So I've been principal since 2006 it's in, the, right. in, in, a, in a French Catholic system. So from 2001 to 2022, the end of June of 2022. So a lot of years. Fantastic schools. I did about four or five different schools as a principal. Um for those years, um, I was able to experience something very unique. I was uh, I was able to go on detachment or on secondment right. to the Ministry of Education here in Ontario, and I was on a provincial leadership team. And like same same idea as the job that I have now. So we had like teachers that were on a team as well, but it was provincial, and I had the opportunity for four years to accompany school leadership teams and school leaders throughout the province in developing what was back then, you know, technology integration when right. first we first started right. talking about it. Like, so that's a while back. But also their leadership skills and competencies, you know, and, and you know, developing themselves and investing in themselves, the importance of that and all and, and all that type of work. So those four years were pivotal for me. They were a, a TSN turning point. That's like a term in Ontario, but that's right. No, that's, <laughs> you know that one, right? Like it's sort of Canada, I think. Right? I'm from yeah. Canada. Yeah, oh, TSN right. yeah, part. you do. Yeah, it's a TSN. It was a TSN right. turning point. For you think we don't get TSN in Canada or in Alberta? It's just like yeah. there's a cutoff. Uh, I don't know. It might have been called something else, some other right. letters. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, but it's all Canada. So <laughs> TSN <laughs> turning point, right? <laughs> yeah, we get so, and you're a sports reason. guy, so you know all about that. As well, I do. So. Yeah, yeah. But that was a huge turning point because that's when I discovered, you know, my love for leadership, and and it was there, but I was just not aware of it. Right. So I discovered right. it and I said, you know what, this is my calling. This is what I need to be doing. So from there, I launched my still a principal, of course, but then I launched my, you know, my consulting business, which is Inspire Leadership Coaching. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, the, the workshops, keynote speaking, uh, the French podcast, which is Inspire Leadership Podcast which is in French, but I'm launching very, very soon my my new one in English, which is going to be called This is Leadership. Love it. Love it. Hopefully, I'll be able to have you, George, as a guest. That would be really, really <laughs> I, awesome. I'd I mean, be like, I mean, just asking you to go to the bathroom over and over again <laughs> on the French podcast. It's like the only, only thing I remember from my French class. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that just put me on a path that's brought me to where I am today. So, you know, I just kept developing that and and just kept refining my skills as as a coach when I got certified as, as a coach and then as a leadership coach, a high performance coach. And for me, it was clear, you know, in, in our school systems and being a principal, uh, it's it's like it made me realize this is what's missing, right? Like right. in school districts, we all we talk about the teachers and that's important, you know, and and the support staff and but we need to give them to be able to do to be the best version of, them, of themselves every day mm -hmm. and make an Im and have an impact on you know on students but what about the principals right, right. it was never intentional it was never it was like you have the job and then it's like trial by fire right you, you know unless you had a vp or you were a vp and then you had like somebody to help you or a mentor often in in our community anyways there's it's a small community and we've got different schools in smaller mm -hmm. communities so a lot of the schools you were you had no vice principal or even because it was a very small school, you'd be like, you know, principal at, right. you know, 0. 0.7 and then teaching 0. 0.3. Oh, wow. right? oh, yeah. So, yeah, but it just, it made me realize, you know, we need this, we need this. So I just, for myself, I just kept developing that aspect of my leadership and, and using both the job as a, as a school principal, it was almost like my, um, it became almost like my, my sandbox. You know, to, to, mm -hmm. to try stuff and to work, to work things and coach uh, and, and coach the staff. But um, I also was able to develop that through through the business, right, through through the consulting, mm -hmm. which was, you know, meeting people like you and just learning and growing and, and just wanting more and more and more. And mm -hmm. there's no finish line. Right. It's it's just right. great. The feeling you get. And so that's what I wanted for all the principals, not only in my district, but, but everywhere. You know, if I if I got this feeling and it energizes me when I add value to myself and I invest in myself and, and look at the repercussions at work, it's just, I, I'm passing it on and I'm, I'm giving it to the staff and the kids. This is what we need. So, you know, I was pushing that a little bit in, in the school district and, and putting out ideas and, and doing stuff on my own, you know, as a, as a district, as a school principal, you know, I would organize the mastermind groups, you know, for my colleagues and I, and then we do like book studies and stuff like that. So I was doing some stuff, but I wanted, you know, at some point I was like, you know, I want to have a bigger impact. So, you know, after all these years and in, in, in my prior 
Mm -hmm. a school district, this opportunity came up. So I was looking for like, okay, I want to be, yeah, you know, I want to do that, that job. You know, I was looking at this position, the district principal position, right? Like the one that I mm -hmm. described where you've got teachers and you go into the schools and you do it, you know, throughout this district. And I'm like, you know, it, it's, it's an important job, but it needs to expand because we've got nothing for our principals. Mm -hmm. We need to, to add that in. And so this opportunity came up where, um, in, in the neighboring school district, which was the public francophone right. school system, they put out a post for, for that job description. But to my surprise, and I was extremely happy, they added this whole section of the job description talking about, you know, accompanying school principals, developing mm -hmm. their leadership, coaching them. And it's like, my God, like they've got it. This is what I'm talking about right, right. here. So All here's right. my opportunity. So I said, I have to apply. You know, so I talked to my superintendent, let him know when I applied. And sure enough, they offered me the position. And and this is since just September 2022, awesome. uh, September 2021. Sorry. So just this school year here, it's, I'm in this new position. And, you know, I've I've gotten all this this room to be able to develop things and be creative and and to put in these these initiatives where, like you said, in, in before recording, George, we talked about, you know, if you want things to fly in schools, the first people we need to convince right. and have on board are the principals, right? Because they can just put a dead stop to it right away. Oh. So it's to change that mindset and say, because a lot, a lot of the principals would say, well, you know, they don't even say it. It's just, it's almost like automatic, you know, professional development. I don't got time for that. You know, I'm, I'm putting right. up fires every, all day, every day, and I'm stressed and I don't even eat a lot of the days and yeah. my coffee, will I warm it up in the microwave about eight times. So like it's, it's decomposing inside right. the, the Tim Hortons right. cup. You know right. what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Eh? I do. The, I gotta, I gotta say something You're <laughs> You're gonna, I remember yeah, this is something that you just mentioned. And I was like, Oh God, here comes 12 year old George. I have to bring this up. <laughs> so we were at the district level. Um, we were focusing on technology and yeah, the, uh, the uh we were talking about like hey what like what are we gonna call these people and we actually were they were gonna be called technology integration teachers i'm like no do <laughs> do not call yeah. them technology integration teachers because every educator uses acronyms and we do not want that acronym happening in our school i don't know if you picked it up technology so i was like no 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 <laughs> no no so we we're like yeah no just, can we just say tech leads can we just yeah. say that because like yeah. it's gonna be a yeah. joke and we don't yeah. need this so, that's funny <laughs> well i heard it i was like oh no i just remember hearing that I'm like oh god no 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 yeah. no because yeah. we acronym everything we same thing with us we acronym right. everything right right yeah, so that uh, wouldn't have been good so I got to ask you this, um, like we, we did talk about this before, and this is my contention with yeah. this is that I actually think, I don't want to say principal is the most important role in education. I think it's, so I guess I'm just trying to, it's maybe the most influential in the sense that I feel that principals have the most authority closest to children. So that's where that a lot of that impact can happen. So for example, you have a principal who's like really good with the public you know, doesn't get phone calls to the superintendent or the director. Yeah. So yeah. it's like can kind of fly under the radar, but they can actually do a lot of damage Absolutely. right? in that sense. But they're, they're, they have the good, you know, for lack of a better term, political skills. Right. And I feel like a lot of times we're asking, we're constantly talking about educators, you know, being, you know, for the uh, 21st century and all that crap. Right. We always yeah. say this yeah. stuff. And then, but then we like, we just want leadership to be the same way it was. Right. And so, you know, just like, let's, let's change the paradigm and the the dynamic of like, think about all the times we've changed the, you know, we try to think about different ways, like think about the teacher's facilitator and yeah. by, by principal is just the principal. Right. But yeah. so we're never asking that to change. So like, how do you see that, you know, role evolving, um, in, in education? Well, I, I think, <clears throat> I think it is evolving. It definitely. Mm -hmm. We're realizing, and I think more and more school districts anyways, here in, in Ontario are realizing the importance of investing in that. And that maybe we kind of miss, we kind of missed the boat for a long time when it came to that, because, right. and, and, and in the evolution of the role, right. The, the administrator was, was the manager, right? right? So you do the budgets and whatever, make sure the toilets worked and whatnot. But now it's become a lot more of a, of a leadership, right? Versus a, a manager and right. a leader is that's completely different. To me, leadership is developing others. Right. Right. So it, it doesn't matter if it's kids or if it's the staff, it's, it's, it's all about what can I do as a leader 
And what can I put into place? What budget do I need? How do I need to spend my budget? Everything, everything that's planned and that you're going to plan as a as a school leader, is based on how can I make, you know, the people that are in my building grow and myself uh, within mm -hmm. that as well. So a lot of people aren't 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 uh, comfortable with that mm -hmm. because you don't know what you don't know. And often, like teaching, you you know you know how you teach how you've been taught. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you'll know school principles when you were a teacher, and you'll most likely start you know, being an, an, an administrator, like what you've experienced. So, you know, a lot of people are focused on the mechanics of the job when we should be focused on the mechanics of the relationships. Well, the, the, right? so the, the, there's like a Covey, um, there, there's like a Covey thing that leadership is about, I mean, you said that leadership is about people, management is about stuff, but you actually have to have both skills, right? Exactly. So for example, you have this vision for all these incredible things that you want to do. Yeah. But then you don't have the the actual management skills to place the resources in the hands of the people that you want to think different. So it's not like a, I think a lot of people because you always see that 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 little thing that we say and oh it's, we don't need managers we need leaders. I'm like no 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 yeah, you yeah. need both. You actually you need, need both. You need you need both of those skills because basically you have this vision for what we try to do, but you actually have to have the skills and the tools to put those things in place, right? Yeah. So. So I got I got to share the story with you, and I, it's one of my favorite like moments in in my speaking career, my okay. consulting career, and it was actually happened in North Bay. Okay. So I'm doing this. Uh, I'm doing this. Uh, just really small group. It's a bunch of principals. We're all talking about really kind of rethinking education. What are some of the opportunities? And there was a there is a, a gentleman there, and he was near retirement. I remember okay. this. Okay. And he was near retirement, and he's like, "So you want me to do like this?" this thing and he was like he, he was just kind of like you know like this is like a, this is very different from what i you know was brought up to do right mm. so the nicest guy ever was not like not like a combative you know because yeah. you can get those two right yeah. like yeah why do we need to do this and stuff like this so as i mentioned he was near retirement and like how near is he he retired like two months later okay right yeah, that's pretty so, close. So, so, but he wasn't going to. Okay. And this, this, and so I got an email from somebody in North Bay that said, "You actually, you missed an amazing speech. That gentleman that you talked to actually said, you know, I wasn't going to retire, and then George came, <laughs> <laughs> and and, I'll, and and then George came, and he's talking about all of these things in education, all these new evolving things, and how important it was, and." I didn't want to do them. And so I've decided I'm retired. And the reason I'm retiring is because I know we need to move forward. I know we know we need to get better, but I'm at the point where I don't necessarily want to continue to grow and figure this new stuff out or invest so in I, that I, way. Right. So I decided that I'm going to actually retire instead of, of instead of staying and not doing those things. But yeah. you, if you are in this, if you are in this position, you need to get going and moving forward. Or if you if you're if you're not willing to learn, you're in the wrong place. And I I have like, you know, like he's like obviously I I like I met the guy for like an hour, and I know he's like he's through a joke, making a very important point. Do you know what I mean? I, and I it was like exactly I, I was one. I was just I like it made me love this man so much more because I think there's sometimes where. Um, we've all seen people like this in education. They're close to retirement and they stay, but they're like, they were done five years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. So, so I just, I love your thoughts on that. Cause it was like, I'll, I wish I could find who this guy is. I remember, yeah. like, but I remember specifically it was in North Bay. I'll never forget that. Cause I actually remember the room hearing the story. And I just thought, wow, that is like, that's an amazing thing to say. It is. And, and right. before I get into it, I think we should officially call that the North Bay maneuver. <laughs> you know, you talked about the Thunder Bay. It's yeah, going to be like what you said. North Bay. Yeah, yeah, that's the maneuver. Okay, but I'll say that. You know what? It's not even just an education because um, yeah. my wife is an entrepreneur. She's an amazing woman, amazing mm -hmm. entrepreneur, and she's got a business here in North Bay and with about 20 some odd employees. And, and, I, and I mentioned that because we say it everywhere, right? Like people that right. are close to retirement and it's not everybody. Like some people yeah. still have that, that joy and that energy. But for this, for this person to realize it, I think it takes a lot of courage and it takes to know yourself to say, okay, right. I was going to continue, but I'll admit that I'm not ready to invest 
in this, right. to continue to invest in this. And a lot of people, and that's, I think that's great. Does it mean you're going to stop investing? No, it could just mean you that you you're want to invest investing in fishing. something else. You want to invest in fishing. In fishing, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In fishing, sports, uh, whatever you want to do, right? But to be able to recognize that and to act on it is huge. Right. Because I'm sure that you're in the same boat and, and in education or you've experienced the same thing or known people in, in education and in, and everywhere else. And we're like, yeah. man, they, they, they should have left about four years ago. Right. Because for some re because either they don't know any better, they don't know anything different, or they just didn't develop those tools that are able to get them to realize it and to be able to set goals and say, okay, you know what? Maybe I'm done with this, but I'm afraid of what's going to come after because I don't know. I didn't think about it. I have no idea what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to keep doing what I know best, mm -hmm. right. even if, if I'm miserable. You, you know, know you, you know, like I, I'm thinking about this, like, to be honest with you, I'm like self-reflecting here, right? Like yeah. when, you're, when you're, when you're talking about this, yeah, because you make a really good point in the notion that like, we always talk about this in education, but we probably do it ourselves in many ways too. Right. Yeah. Like I'm looking at some stuff that I used to do that I no longer do. And I think part of it is because I wasn't ready to like commit to the growth of it and like how it would change and things like that. I, every, every year I take a little like self-imposed sabbatical yeah. in the month of December to try something new, to figure something else out. What, and I, I actually never plan what that thing is. Yeah. It, I let it hit me over the time when I, I take some, a break away from things. And I think a lot of times there's, there's this really fascinating thing that I've always kind of noticed about YouTubers, TikTok people, things like okay. this, is that at the a lot of times people at the pinnacle, like they're like, have the, the biggest audiences They're They have the most clout. They'll like, just stop doing it and they'll move to a different platform yeah. or they'll start doing a different thing. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because they, they're the, they're the type of people that will quit something a little bit too early rather than a little bit too late. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes if you like stick with something a little bit too long, um, even if it's working for you, there's, there, there's something, I don't know. I, I, I just, I was kind of thinking of that and it's like, like, it's a feeling, right? You'll be like, Oh, okay. right. Oh yeah. This is coming up. So right. if, if, if you're there, you, you might've waited too long already, Yeah, yeah. you know, and that, I think that's in the importance of, of reflecting, you know, then that's the question you can ask yourself, like mm -hmm. a podcasting, let's say you want to start a podcast, right? Well, okay. I've got the logo, I've got the name and. But maybe one of the questions that you should ask is, okay, well, how far do you want to go with it? And how long do you think you want right. to go with it? Right. You know? And just, just keep that question behind. And, and what are the look for's that I need to watch out for when I'm getting close to where it's becoming more of a task than something that I enjoy? Right. Right. Yeah. There's, there's, there's certain, there's certain things I've done in my life where I like, I felt like I was really enjoying it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm just, yeah. I'm good. And you know, I've done it and I've experienced it, but I, I don't feel like me being in this space serves other people well, because I'm kind of just on, you know, exactly on, on, you know, neutral. So like when you think about the, the principal role yeah, and you think about like, what is the most, I guess, I don't know if I ever asked this, what's the most important thing in your eye that a principal can do for their teaching staff? The most important. Oh, well, most like important. what's, what comes to your head when I ask that question? Right. Cause I know we're like, yeah, well, putting something on came. to rank it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the most important thing that a principal can do is, is, is to help them grow. Mm -hmm. And it's not to make sure they got, you know, what, what they need, cause that'll come with the growth, but to right. know where they're at and where they want to go and to have those conversations and not just have conversations about, well, you know, what's your prep and, when you know right. what's the evaluation and what's going on in your class i'm going to go to walk through but it's it's to have the conversations to get to know them you know they, they have families they have aspirations they have goals and then to see well how can we take that and bring it into into the world of the school or or and and i got a perfect example for that i had a guest mm -hmm. on my podcast and he he also had a podcast and and he's he's great at it and it's fantastic and, and he's it's and he's a teacher and he's and I think he was looking for different ways, you know, how he, how he can, he can be more innovative in his, in his approaches with the kids and get them engaged. And he, and he was already doing a great job at that mm -hmm. the teacher in Quebec. And I said, well, I said, why don't you bring podcasting into the school? 
Mm-hmm. You know, like you love it and, and you love editing and you love doing yeah. it. I said, just bring it in and approach your, your principal and say, listen, you know, if we get like a, like a little mixing board and a couple mics and whatever, right. it doesn't take much. Like we know it doesn't take much at all and, and bring that passion of yours into it. And maybe if, you know, if everybody did that and looked at, looked at it that way and had that conversation and put it out there, it's like I said a little while back, you don't know what you don't know. So if you're not actually ask, asking yourself those questions, love of cooking, love of sports, right. love whatever right. it is. Like, right. why can't you bring that into what you do every day? Right. Jeez, we're at work more than we are at home throughout most of our life. Mm-hmm. So it's ridiculous to think that I'm going to get up every morning or do a podcast and or whatever it is. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're going to get days like that. And you have you mentioned it, you know, um, a few minutes ago in our conversation, we're all going to have bad days. Yeah, But in general, you know, how can you make it so that it's exciting to get there? We we try to do the same thing with the kids. You mm-hmm. know, how do we make school exciting for them? They want to be there and they're excited to be there. It's the same thing for us. So the most important thing I think a principal can do is to help the staff, the teachers and, and the support staff and the custodians, you know, right. uh, uh, secretary, everybody to, to discover that and say, how can we bring that in? You know, the feeling that you have when you're at home gardening, mm-hmm. how can we bring that into the school? I don't care if you're a, if you're a custodian or if you're a, a right. secretary. You know, let's discover that together because that is going to impact everything. Once they discover that, then they discover that passion, and 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 then they realize, holy geez, I can actually maybe bring this into the work that I do and integrate it somehow and be innovative. Right. Right. I can bring that in here. Well, it's it's like it's like a it's like a kill two birds right type of deal. Mm-hmm. It's I'm loving it. I love doing it. And now I'm sharing that with the kids or with the staff and just you sharing it. You'll see that you'll feel that passion. Like we do when we share, you can feel it. You can hear it. Even in a podcast, you can feel it because you you can hear it in the voice. Right. So, and, and that's, you know, in the last, I'd say in the last, Oh my goodness, six, seven years, ever since that opportunity that I had when I was on detachment for four years and I realized that Mm -hmm. I was like, my God, you know, as a teacher, I think that's what I was doing, but I didn't know I was doing that. Mm-hmm. But now that I know, and and it's in front of me, and I and and I identified it, I can't forget it. I know it's there, so I can be really, um, you know, I I can plan how I want to do it, and I can be, you know, uh, really um, intentional on how I'm going to do it. So, how can it look like in my school if I can give? You know, if I can help teachers find that excitement right. and bring it in every day, you know, more, mostly every day, everybody has bad days. So I think that that kind of coaching yeah. that we can do with staff will, you know, just at the base, you know, you start with that. And then when you, once you tap into those passions, to those interests, everything else will, will, will just amplify, you know, their performance, their, their uh, motivation, mm-hmm. they're, they're wanting to connect with the kids. The, the, the relationships that will be developed within, you know, between staff members as well. And that'll just change your whole culture. Well, they, they when this is, uh, this is one thing I was thinking about. A lot of people, you've heard this too, right? I'll say, ask teacher, like, tell me about your principal. Oh, they just let me do whatever I want. I'm like, oh, it's not good because it's not. And they, and it's like, I understand the m- mentality. Like if you have a, if you have a principal that's weak, you just like want them out of your way. Right. Yeah. You don't want to deal with it. And yeah. I understand that. But the the reason I, I I I always struggle when people say that is because it's not that they don't give you autonomy; it's that they're pushing you to get better. That's right. right. Like if you that's part of the role is to help people grow. And as you mentioned, relationships are so crucial. To this, but the best friends I've ever had, I mentioned her ten million times. Her name's Kelly Wilkins. Yeah. yeah. And she actually the thing that she did really well is as you mentioned, she really built relationships. But she would ask me like tough questions. She'd make me really think about my practice. Yeah. But she she made me she made me want to get better. Like she, like she didn't like push me to the point where I couldn't handle it. She, she supported me to a way where I wanted to grow to, and you know, as you mentioned, you know, you're some of your administrators where I wanted to just, you know, just be better, be, just grow just to get better because of how much trust she put in me, how, you know? And so it wasn't, she never just stood out of my way. She was always kind of like, she was there. It was like, she just kind of knew when to pop in. Right. And I think that's, a really powerful way. And now, Joel, we got to go because we've been talking for a while. But <laughs> I, I think that's a beautiful way 
uh, to end it. And mm. uh, I honestly, I just, I'm so glad we I, we took this yeah, time to talk. Me too. And, uh, uh, I really appreciate your leadership. I appreciate all you've done. I, I can't wait to cross paths in person again because it's been way too long. Absolutely. Same right. here. Same here. I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. And I appreciate you immensely. And uh, you hopefully I'll get you on my podcast too so we can just keep talking. And can you actually, <laughs> what, what is your podcast for the, I know yeah. we have uh, French speakers, you know, that are listening yeah. to this. What is your podcast? Yeah. So it's everywhere. You know, it's on every platform. So you just, oh, what's, it called? what's it called? It's called the, the French one. It's called Inspire Leadership Podcast. So if you, a spear leadership podcast, if you say it in French, right? A spear leadership, podcast. Spear leadership podcast. Okay. So the, 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 the nice thing about the name is that I thought about is that you can say, you read it in English and in French, right? Inspire <laughs> yeah. leadership. Yeah. So, so podcast, but if you search that and then you just put my name, uh, Joel, like J-O-E-L, then mm -hmm. you'll find it right away. So that's a French one. The English one is not published yet because I'm going to be recording some of the first episodes, but I do have the name. Uh, the account is up. It's just it's not out on platforms. And that one is called "This Is Leadership." Well, I'm ho I'm hoping that I get invited so we can. No, chat. you are going to get invited. So I love I'm just it. letting you know now, giving you a heads up, and <laughs> uh, and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the North Bay maneuver again. <laughs> <laughs> it was an awesome talk to you. Hey, everyone! Thanks so much for listening, Joel. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.